Welcome everybody to the beautiful circuit of Zandvoort here in pretty roasting hot sunshine. It's almost 30 degrees, even though it's the end of the afternoon here. And we're all set for the start of the third weekend of the Prototype Cup Germany, the second season of this fantastic championship for LMP3 cars. If you love V8 engines and the roar of them, 5.6 litre Nissan's power these cars along, and they have incredible high speeds of around about 260 uh, 160 kilometers an hour with uh, 455 brake horsepower. There you can see the temperatures that we're describing. Very hot here. Uh, you'd be pretty pleased to be in that spot of the grid uh, on rows two, three, and four. You're in the shade of the grandstand, but that's not the case for our pole sitter, Oscar Tunjo, uh, claiming pole position in qualifying this morning uh, in the Dakar with a time of 1 minute 31.335 seconds. But it was mighty close in the first 15 minute qualifying session of the year. He was just 79 thousandths of a second quicker uh, than Marcus Pommer uh, in the racing experience uh, Decan who did a 131.414 so nothing between those two and then there's a bit more time uh, between second and third uh, with the uh, number eight car of Gula qualifying Nico Gula third quickest but nearly three tenths of a second off the pace of Oscar Tunjo with a 1 minute 31.632 second lap and then to complete the second row of the grid Lawrence Hall will start the Karin and Kempi Motorsport uh, Dukan with a time of 1 minute 31.838 he was only six thousandths of a second behind Nico Gola's time uh, so tight in the battle for third quickest in qualifying this morning Max van der Schnell uh, will line up fifth on the grid in the more motorsport by writer Ligier, the first of the Ligiers in qualifying, 131.9, uh, sorry, 696 for him as well, so almost uh, matching the pace of those two ahead, and uh, Leonard Hugenboom uh, in his home country here, qualifying in sixth place, will start uh, the number 78 DKR Engineering uh, Dukan, also with a pretty rapid 1 minute 31.707. Uh, they can see the rest of the grid forming up. This then is the fifth race of the season. Uh, 12 rounds uh, across six events this year. Hockenheim was the first round. Oschersleben was next up. We come to Zandvoort, and after this, remarkably, we'll already be at the halfway stage in the championship before we have visits to the Norris Ring in a few weeks' time. Assen and then Nürburgring to round out the season. And so far, the driver that's on pole, Oscar Tanjo, and his uh, teammate for this year, Julian uh, Potelos, have got the championship lead. They've had two wins out of the four races so far. They've had podium finishes in the other two rounds as well. And they arrive here with 86 points and a five-point lead uh, in the championship over uh, Marcus Pommer and Gary Hauser, who have also been on the podium in every single race so far this year. First two seconds and a third place for them. We just saw a few moments ago uh, Robin Rogalski, who's going to start uh, his DKR engineering machine uh, with teammates Valentino Catalano. Uh, they've gone well this year with a win as well last time out at Oschersleben. And uh, it's a bigger expanded grid that we've got here for this weekend. Up to a record entry of 18 cars. And Freddie Hunt, a name that's uh, familiar with uh, fans of the Prototype Cup from last year, because he was a race winner at the Nürburgring, finished just outside the top 10 in the championship. And the British driver, uh, for the first time this season, making an appearance in the Prototype Cup this year uh, to uh, add to an extended grid. Axel Jeffries, one of the other drivers coming in this weekend uh, to contest the championship. Uh, so it's fantastic to see an expanded grid of these uh, V8 cars about to go racing for uh, 55 minutes with a mandatory pit stop in the race. Uh, most of the cars are shared cars with two driver entries, uh, but uh, even if you are a single driver, you've still got to come in and make that mandatory pit stop. Uh, so far this year in qualifying, things have been pretty evenly split as well between those uh, front three in the championship uh, with uh, two pole positions this year so far going to Robin Rogalski and Valentino Catalano. We'll be there a bit further down the grid for this one. And then you have had a pole position in the first round of the championship for Oscar Tanjo and uh, Julian Potelos. And there was a pole position in round three, the first race at Oschersleben for Laurence Hur and uh, Matthias Luton. Uh, so the cars lined up on the grid. It's a 4.2 kilometre long circuit here at Zandvoort. Uh, in the dunes, in right 
right across uh, the uh, dunes at the back of the circuit. You can see the North Sea. There's a big, long strip of sand, the beach there. Uh, it was uh, full on last night. There was a rave. There was a fairground. Uh, thousands of people in attendance. There are restaurants along the, uh, the beach. It's a beautiful place to come and watch racing. And it's a proper old school circuit, this, uh, which was first founded as a street track back in the uh, mid 1930s or late 1930s. In the 1940s, uh, it got turned into a permanent race circuit, uh, still using some of the original roads. Uh, but the key feature here at Zandvoort is the undulation A and B, the banking that you have on the uh, some of the corners in particular uh, that were remodeled back in 2020 uh, when the return of Formula One came to Zandvoort after a number of years away. And that's one of the corners with huge banking here at turn three. It really is steeper than it looks uh, on TV. I rode around it last night on, uh, on my bike and uh, it's pretty phenomenal. And so too the final corner, which has an 18 degree banking. It's almost like uh, being on an oval as you go through the final corner now. And then you've got this undulation on the run up out of turn three, it's uphill all the way through. Uh, coming out of there and then you get to a crest you go downhill from turn four to the left hand king of turn five Rob slow to Maca corner named after the former uh, Dutch racing driver then up into turn six you go over another crest uphill and then at the end of the first sector you plummet down all of a sudden over a crest down into turn seven at Schleibach you've only really got turns eight nine and ten that are relatively flat and then the rest of the corners are undulating including another high cambered corner through turn 12 the second part of the chicane at hands Ernst. so it's a fantastic driver's circuit uh, we should see some great racing here today but it's a circuit on which you've got to be very careful as a driver uh, it's not to make any mistakes because it's easy to run wide the cars the balance of the cars get unsettled with all of these uh, undulations that we uh, have around the track uh, so they have a mandatory pit stop in the uh, middle part of the race pit stops come between the 22nd and 32nd minute of the race and depending on the driver combination whether it's uh, uh, gold bronze or silver drivers and whatever the combination is there there are extra uh, time penalties to add to those combinations also if you're a single driver you get time added on uh, they'll run Michelin tires and uh, they have four sets of slick tires that they get to run here in this uh, weekend at Zandvoort right then so uh, the drivers and the championship leaders about to go into action here. Oscar Tunjo on pole position in the blue and white decan. And then Marcus Pommer, who's experienced uh, prototype racer, but prior to that, single-seater racer as well in German and European Formula 3 racing and FIA Formula 2 racing as well. He starts second in the racing experience, number 15 car, Nico Gola and Lawrence on the second row of the grid. The lights about to go out, then Chris Hartley here, trackside, to talk you through the latest battle in the Prototype Cup Germany as they make their way through and towards the start finish line coming through with the clock ticking uh, down there's gonna be extra formation lap though uh, that's just come through from race control so they're not happy with something they're going to send them around again uh, so everybody's set poised ready to go revs rows all ready to go racing and they've put in an extra formation lap so they're gonna have to go again as far as we can see that's not going to affect the time of the race and not any uh, minutes off the 55 that we've got on the clock so Oscar Tonio and uh, Julian Apotolos are the championship leaders with 86 points. As I say, a five-point lead in the championship uh, coming into this race over Gary Hauser and Marcus Pommer. Uh, so the top two of the championship are together on the grid. Uh, you get 25 points for a race win, 20 points for second, and fifth, uh, yeah, 16 points for third, down to a point for 15th place. So it all makes... Uh, for a very open championship that we've got uh, coming up here. So the cars making their way then through and uh, can the formation lap complete now and through they go. 53 minutes, 48 seconds left on the clock. They charge down towards the uh, first run through this uh, banking getting another sighting lap of that. So the clock now is coming down and uh, eating into this uh, time that we've got. And you can see the run over the crest here as they come through. So uphill out of turn three, down and then up again. This is the downhill run through the right-hander that I was talking about at turn seven, Schleibach, which is a great place to go and watch the uh, racing action here. So Oscar Tundio, the driver, starts the race from pole position. 
uh, with uh, just that fractional advantage in qualifying this morning, leading the round of this extra formation. That was 27 years of age, comes from Colombia and had a single seater career to begin with. Rose as high as the GP3 Championship, the precursor to the FIA Formula 3 Championship. He raced against the likes of Charles Leclerc, Alex Albon, Nick De Vries, who all made their way into Formula One. He's also uh, involved in Formula Renault racing and Formula BMW. Raced against the likes of Stoffel van Dorn when he was in the Formula Renault Euro Cup. Nick de Vries again, Pierre Gasly. Uh, but prototype cup and uh, GT racing is where it's been for him over the last few years. He's made the AC GT Masters racing uh, fourth in the silver category in the Blanc Pont GT Championship in 2021. So the Colombian it is that leads them around getting set then for this race. So that extra formation lap has it eaten into the time a little bit as uh, 55 minutes has become more like 52 minutes now. Here they come then through the banking, ready to go racing hopefully this time. Uh, the safety car looks like it's about to peel in, so it should be go at the second time of asking. Marcus Pommer poised and ready to go uh, to the right-hand side of your picture. A heat haze here with almost 30 degrees air temperature and the drivers will feel this. It's going to be a physically challenging race around Zandvoort as the lights go red to green and we go racing and it looks like a good start for Oscar Tanya. It's not such a good start for Marcus Palmer. Is he going to be stranded on the outside line here? Yes is the answer. He's going to drop from second I think uh, down to fourth place with Gola and Horn. Uh, both making their way through by the looks of it to get uh, through. And so Marcus Pommer not quite on the attack here on the run through that first turn. Uh, dropping down to sixth place, it looks like now as he gets down to turn three. Paul's made a good start. He's the one that's got into that second place. Gora has gone through to third. Max van der Snell and Leonard Hugenboom got through as well. Side by side action here as they go together through turns four up to turn five and six. And then over the crest down in towards turn seven to just about fit into the corner. It's all allowing the race leader to scarper off into the distance. Like Oscar Tanjo has got himself, I would say, at least a one second advantage already halfway around this uh, first lap of the race. Uh, everybody, though, I think, has survived that first few corners uh, for now. And just in the background there, one or two running wide. Continuing the start is under investigation, it says as well. So they're looking at the start of the race. Doesn't say who or why. Uh, looking into that now. Rogalski, another driver who would expect to come through from a bit lower down the grid than normal, has had a pretty good start, gained uh, a place or two in the 77 car, so he's up into the eighth place now. Just gone through the shop as the cars make their way out of turn 12 into this final sector through turns. 13, which is a pretty much 90 degree right hander, and then through this bank turn at turn 14, flat out there, whipping through, and across the line they come. And Oscar Tanya with a 1.5 second lead over Lauren Tour at the end of the first lap of the race. Is it going to be some action just behind? No, thinking about that overtaking maneuver, but not quite. Was Marcus Palmer there? He's dropped down in ninth place. Somebody's run out wide. Look, uh, going through Tarzan is about to rejoin, having got down the escape road there, dropping down the order. Dika Gola, third at the end of the first lap. That Max van der Snell in fourth, Leonard Hugenboom in fifth place, uh, Rogalski up to sixth place. And then a good start as well for the 22 car of Hecklander, who uh, made up a bit of time on that first lap of the race. But the absolute best first sector has just gone to Nico Gula in the number eight car, running in third place. Actually, on that first sector, was three tenths quicker than the uh, race leader. Uh, this is a slow-mo of them coming out of Tarzan. Ah, right, and there was the car that we saw going wide and through the gravel trap. 78 machine of uh, Hugenboom. That was uh, fifth at the end of the first lap of the race and had a trip through the gravel trap uh, to drop back down the order bollocks of things. So safety car is coming out as well. So safety car has been deployed. The one car that didn't come through at the end of the first lap of the race was one of our new additional drivers for this weekend, the Moroccan driver, Suleiman Zanfari. So Suleiman Zanfari, the 17-year-old, multiple karting champion, that might be him, and former uh, Swedish and Italian junior karting champion, uh, failing to make it through the end of the first lap of the race. I fear is has had a big off there, so the uh, medical team uh, just checking him over, making sure he's OK. He's out of the car of his own volition, which is good to see and good news, but it looks like he's been a bit winded there. Can't see what the damage to the car might be, other than what we know. He's generally okay, 
I'll take him for a checkup, I think. It's good to see him out of the car, but looks like he's had a fairly hefty one there, which is why the safety car has come out. And so who can boom after he's run through the gravel trap down to 10th place, but Lawrence Hoare has come through, shown as the race leader behind the safety car. And yes, indeed, there he is in the orange and black machine. So, Nico Gola up to second, Andersnell third, Rogalski fourth, Hecklender up to fifth, Jilkova's had a good start up to sixth, Ma uh, Marcus Pommers back up to seventh place. And Oscar Tunjo has dropped all the way back to 17th position, he's the last of the runners. Having uh, led the race away off the line there, in the blue and white machine, perfect start really. Got off the line well, got to Tarzan first. He's been shown as tumbling down the order. These are replays from the very start of the race. In some cases, they're running three abreast through that first corner lap. And everybody survived that part of the lap, at least. So, Samfari out of the race. Tunjo down, according to the timing screen at least, to stone last place. Uh, start was under investigation, start OK. So there's no uh, further action there. Uh, so it's Lawrence Hoare that's taken the lead of the race. We won't see them, but it was certainly look like he was the first car behind the safety car. Matches up with what it says on the timing screen. And so the German driver, 26-year-old, who's the son of Oliver Duck, who raced in GT Masters for a few years uh, between 2009 and 2011. He's got a background in karting, then single seaters. He only switched to LMP3 a few years ago in 2018. I suppose that's five years ago now. He's got lots of international race experience, and it's not sort of leads the race from Nico Gola. And just seeing if we can see Oscar Tanya in the background and exactly what happened to him. So the stricken car being pulled out by the telling how that's Tanjo's car. So it was Tanjo that we saw out of the car. And we lost him and Zanfari, who were nowhere near each other on the track. So yeah, that's the car that was hidden behind the wall. That's what's happened to him. So the race leader, the championship leader, with Julian Apotelos not having had the chance to get into the car, I'm afraid, out of the running already. Well, the good news was that he looked OK. Cars on the safety car just coming up to that point now. So that was on the run out of turn two, just before they get to that downhill drop to turn three. That we lost the race leader. Narrow winding place, not the sort of place you overtake here. Lots of undulation there as well. The car gets unsettled, but quite what happened to it. We'll see what the car has been moved to a safer position now. So this really does open up the championship, doesn't it? It's going to be zero points scored, I'm afraid, uh, for the pole sitters, the points leaders, Tanjo and Apotolos. And they only had a five point lead over Gary Hauser and Marcus Pommer, although. Uh, Marcus didn't have a great start, he was ninth, he got one back, then he's been given another place with Tunjo dropping out of the race. So Marcus Pommer, number 15, up to seventh place, which would yield nine championship points, which is enough to put him ahead, or never ahead of uh, Tunjo and Lepotolos. Then you've got Rogalski and Catalano trying to come up the order as well. They're up to fourth place, they've had a pretty good start uh, in that car, qualified lower down than normal in ninth place. Uh, although uh, Catalano will do qualifying tomorrow. Whichever driver uh, qualifies today, the other driver qualifies tomorrow in the shared cars. And whichever driver qualifies on each day is the one that starts that race. Uh, so Rogalski uh, qualifying in ninth position, but the, the better qualifier this season has been his teammate Catalano. So expect to see them in the front of the grid tomorrow. But they've had no lower than sixth place in the races so far. Uh, is there some barrier damage because we've got various machinery heading out onto the circuit now, including a truck and uh, a digger, which is an unusual sight. And I think the race is going to be red flagged. It is. So we're going to get our red flag. So it looks like there's some damage to the barrier as well on that run through turn two. A quick flick through the S-Bend section once you come out of turn one, you go left and then right through uh, Gerlash at turn two. And that's where the incident has uh, happened. So, an interruption in the race. The clock stops with 43 minutes and 51 seconds left on the clock. I have to say, it's been 
that kind of weekend in terms of red flags we've had in almost every race so far and almost every qualifying session so far over the last uh, two days here at Zandvoort. It's been a red flag. And right, and get more of a sight of the Oscar Tanjo car now. And hopefully it's not damaged so much that it's not going to be involved in the race tomorrow. So Rogalski and Catalano with a chance to catch up in the championship as well. They could theoretically move into the championship lead as the cars are stopped on the start-finish line in single file order. And what I think they'll do on the restart is restart them in the positions that they were in on the last full lap before the red flags came out, which isn't going to affect things anyway in terms of the positions because they're already lined up behind the safety car. So rather than a full restart, it should be the case that they will get a bird of prey with a great aerial view of what's going on here, which is not a lot at the moment, unfortunately, uh, with the race restarting when it does. And as soon as we get news on that, we'll let you know. Then it will be a case of starting in the order in which they are already in, not a full restart. So here, Gula and Max van der Snell then uh, lining up next up in the 99 car. Max van der Snell, son of Mark van der Snell, who he races with, the father and son pairing. Max is uh, 19 years of age. They'll be looking to go well because it's their home race. They both come from the Netherlands. Uh, Dad, uh, Mark, will be in the car second and therefore will be in the car first tomorrow. And... Uh, it's going to be a fairly quick turnaround, which is good news. So five-minute countdown will start at 5.36, which is now, which is why we've just seen that board. So straight into uh, the countdown procedure to get things back underway. It's going to be a safety car restart, we're told, as well, when we get back underway. So well, the birds of prey hunt for something dive-bombing down to try and uh, find their evening meal. It's going to be a late teeth tonight for the drivers in the prototype cup because of this uh, delay. Uh, we'll get news of how long the restart will be. If they knock any time off or they might just leave it at 43 minutes 51, start the clock when they start running behind the safety car. But of course it's going to eat into racing time for them. And we'll let you know as well if there's any change to that pit window with the change to the uh, time that we've got to run in the race. So Lawrence Hur picks up the lead of the race and sits and waits. And they won't want to wait too long on that grid because it's going to be very hot inside the cockpit of those uh, cars. A 26-year-old ready to go. He was on the podium at Le Mans last year in the LMP2 category, Lawrence Hur. 5.41, so a few, just a few minutes away, in fact. We'll be three and a half minutes away from the restart here. The brake car of Nico Gula there. Unmistakable with its uh, pink livery. And Nico Gula in second place. He will restart, 20 years of age. A Formula Renault racer and started his single seater career in Germany in the ADAC Formula 4 Championship uh, back in 2019. Now switching across to these LMP3 cars. Another young driver in the field. It's good to see some of the young drivers. Is, uh, as I say, Max van der Schnell, who is going to be lining up third for the restart. He's just 19 years of age. He used to race in the Westfield Cup here in the Netherlands, as did his uh, dad, who also used to do a bit of radical racing. He's been karting since the age of seven, so 19 he might be, but already a dozen years uh, race experience uh, to his name. They're looking for... A great finish here if they can achieve it because uh, Max and Mark van der Schnell are currently seventh in the championship and the best result this year has been a fifth place finish at uh, Oschersleben. They've been pretty consistent, they've been in the points all the time. Uh, a fifth, an eighth, a ninth and a tenth their results so far but this is their first real opportunity uh, to score a podium this season. Uh, there then Marcus Pommer who's got the opportunity to move with his teammate Gary Hauser into the championship lead here because the championship leaders for the first time this year, we're not going to score points and not going to finish on the podium with Oscar Tungio dropping out of the race. So Marcus Pommer uh, will be looking to have a better start than last time out because it wasn't a great start, was it? Dropped him down the order at one point to ninth place. Former German F3 champion won that title almost 10 years ago now in 2014. Uh, he's also raced in, as I say, the FIA Formula 2 Championship. He's raced in uh, the ADAC GT Masters Championship more recently, a six-time winner in that over uh, four seasons in the championship, and more recently racing 
in prototypes in the European Le Mans series in 2021 and 2022. So it's one of these drivers that seems to have been around for a long time, Marcus Palmer, but he's still only 32 years of age. So the countdown underway and very shortly, in a minute or so's time, we're going to get cars heading back underway for the restart procedure and it will be a safety car restart there in uh, the order that you see. Number 72, Hurt with eight, Gula second, 99, Van der Snell third, uh, Robin Rogalski one to watch in fourth. If he can hold that sort of position and then with Valentino Catalano to come in, that could be uh, on a charge, that car, looking for a podium uh, finisher. It's a former breakdancer, Robin Rogalski, in the fourth place, number 77 car but also lots of racing experience and things like the ADAC GT4 Championship, GT Masters, he's done uh, the odd race in. Uh, the Audi Sports R8 LMS Cup, he was the champion in that in 2019. Renault Clio's, uh, you name it. He's got built up quite a bit of experience in just a short period of time, the 22-year-old. Behind him, starting fifth on the grid, is going to be uh, Max Henklander. And he's another driver. It's built up quite a bit of experience in GTs, 33 years of age, German driver, podium finisher in the GT Masters Championship. Last year was his first year driving LMP3 cars. So green flags, off they go behind the safety car, and indeed the clock starts to tick down already behind that safety car. But just a word about the uh, format for the pit stops when we get to them. If it's going to stick to the normal times, it will be pit stop window for 10 minutes between the 22nd and 32nd minute in the race. Mandatory pit stop. The race director can make a different decision, post the, po postpone the pit window if, uh, if it's uh, appropriate to do so, which is why I'm just saying that it might not necessarily be the normal period for the pit stop window, although it could still remain at that. Uh, and then... There's a minimum pit stop time for everybody to have the driver changes. If you're a single driver and you're in the bronze category, you have to pit for an extra five seconds on top of that. If you're a single driver in the silver category, 25 seconds on top of that. And then depending on the ability and grading of the drivers, uh, if you're a bronze silver driver pairing, you get an extra 10 seconds on top of the minimum pit stop, pit stop uh, time. 20 seconds if you're a silver silver pairing, which is most of the pairings here. And if you're gold to bronze pairing, uh, 20 seconds. But if there are two bronze drivers, uh, then they don't have any penalty time, and that makes life much easier for them in uh, respect of that, of a much shorter pit stop time. I say most of the front runners in and around the championship lead are uh, bronze, uh, sorry, silver, silver pairings. So, chance for the drivers to focus themselves. Safety car is just going to be out for one lap, then we'll get back up to full race pace. Lawrence uh, leading them back into the charge when we get to that point. Looking for his and Matthias Luton's first race win of the year. They're a gold bronze pairing. Who is the uh, more experienced driver uh, with? Gold rating and bronze for Matthias Luton. There's no platinum drivers allowed in, and things are very evenly matched. The safety car is starting to edge away from them already on that run down to turn 13. And you see, backing them all up now is uh, Lawrence Herb in the uh, number 72 machine looking to pull the trigger when he gets to turn 14. So Nico Gula is going to have to sit tight and try and find a way through perhaps at turn one if he can spring it but he can't go until the leader goes he can't hit the accelerator until the leader hits the accelerator and nobody can overtake until they get to the start finish line uh, so it's going to be Lawrence Herb from fourth on the grid that gets the restart underway as he charges in the Corine and Kempi Motorsport number 72 car into Tarzan going with him but not close enough to attack is Nico Gola in the Number eight, uh, BWC Muka Motorsport car from third on the grid. Both of them progressing up the order, helped out by the fact that Marcus Pommer didn't get a great start on lap one. Oscar Tanyo is one of the two drivers that didn't make it through in the early stages. And it was Oscar Tanyo, the championship leader, that dropped out of the race and gone off the road between turns two and three that brought about the red flag. So we're back underway, 40 minutes, 30 seconds or so left on the clock. And this is the charge then down through turn seven and down into what's a pretty tricky braking zone at turn eight. 
couple of hard braking zones where the back end dances around a bit. The other one is Tarzan at turn one, which is a very bumpy entry, I'm told, on the way into that turn. And to the left-hander at turn 10, it's all about trying to get the acceleration out of that down this uh, back straight. And a replay of oh, contact there. Unusual position. One got away with it, the other one didn't. Did he rescue it? Oh, no, he didn't, I'm afraid. And into the barriers, he went side on and damage that would probably be to the left side of that car. But it's the number 24 machine of Freddie Hunt, isn't it? Which had that coming together and was sent briefly into the barriers. But I think, I'm afraid, Freddie might be retiring. His dad, James Hunt, sadly passed away 30 years ago now. The 1976 Formula One world champion was a race winner here at Zandvoort back in 1975. The only race victory for the Hesketh Formula One team. Uh, so Freddie, as I say, was a race winner in this championship last year, but a uh, really annoying return to the championship for him in his first outing of 2023 because he's out of the running after that contact. And our latest retirement in the race. So Lawrence Hurt leading the way by around about a second and a half. But forget about it, because the safety car is going to come back out and bunch them all up again. We've got uh, more uh, drivers and cars under investigation. This time for the safety car restart. One is going to be the uh, number 22 car, Max Hecklander, which is in sixth place. And the other one uh, is the car that's just ahead of him, the number five car, Jill Cover. So both under investigation for the safety car uh, restart. Gabriella Jilkova, she is in a pretty good race so far, the 28-year-old. Front runner in the uh, ADAC GT4 Championship last year uh, from the Czech Republic. And she got ahead of Max Hecklander on that first lap restart as well. So up to fifth place for Jilkova in the number five car. Hecklander down to six. Marcus Pommer still only there in seventh place. So maybe about to outscore Oscar Tundio and Julian Apostolos in terms of the championship, but you've got to keep an eye on that Rogalski catalano car as well, which is fourth place at the moment, and with Valentino to get into the car, will be rapid when they get going again, I suspect. So, Valentino Catalano, when will he get the chance to get into the car? Safety car picks them all back up again. Second time we've seen the safety car last time, and then went into a red flag, but... This is because of Freddie Hunt's car stranded at the side of the circuit. So we've lost uh, Zamfari, Tangio, and now Freddie Hunt. The order is number 72, Lawrence in the lead. Number eight, Nico Gurla in second. 99, Max van der Schnell in third place. Number 77, Robin Rogalski in fourth place. And then in fifth place, Gabriela Jilkova, sixth place. Number 22, Conrad Motorsport car of Max Hecklander and Hecklander. He's ahead of Marcus Pommer, number 15, in seventh place. Uh, with Jan Marshalowski in car number 14, currently running in eighth place, having started on the fifth row of the grid. He's got a new teammate this weekend, Jasper uh, Stixma, who is getting used to, for the first time, racing a car with uh, real downforce this weekend. So Freddie Hunt's car has been uh, towed away there on that run towards turn eight where the cars are coming through under safety car conditions. Getting towards the point where that pit window is uh, going to be opening up as well, so that could be pretty frenetic. About three minutes or so away from that original pit window time opening up if it sticks to it. If there's no change by the race director, it could be the case that they all come in and uh, the safety car conditions because you don't want everybody else to come in behind the safety car you're stuck behind the safety car on track going very slowly and then you're not getting away from them you're not pulling away from them as they all pit because you're only doing the very slow lap time behind the safety car so that'll be something the teams are aware of here as we get towards that pit window opening up there's no refueling there's no tire change unless you have to because you've got a damaged tire or the weather changes which is not, definitely not going to be the case today Got a maximum of three people working on the car and a maximum of one air gun as well during the pit stop. Cars aren't allowed to reverse. 
and no work can be carried out on the car during the pit stops either. So very uh, strict rules, any violation of those pit stop regulations, including short stopping, and they're all being clocked by race control as well to make sure they don't undercut the minimum pit stop time. If you break any one of those regulations, the result will be you'll get at least a drive-through penalty. Can be 10 seconds stop going, penalties uh, added on as well. And uh, there you go, confirmation the pit window is going to be postponed. So the race director has, as I said, got this ability, this fluidity to change depending on the circumstances of the race, the pit stop window, and with it looking likely that the safety car would still be out when that pit window opens in, or originally would have opened in a minute and 40 minutes time, uh, 40 seconds time rather, they've decided to postpone that. I don't think it'll be too long before we've got the circuit clear and we're able to get things back underway. No one saw and he's finished what's been a stint with very little in the way of high speed laps, has it? He's going to hand over to Matthias Luton. Nico Gula will hand over the number eight car in second place if it stays in second place. And to his teammate as well, Gustavo Kirillia. Kirillia, Brazilian, a rapid driver to get in be worth keeping an eye to as well. So these LMP3 cars all competing, 18 of them starting the race. Sadly, we've lost Freddie Hunt, Oscar Tanyo, and Sullivan Zamfari as well. Safety car is coming in on this lap, though, for the 15 cars that remain in action here in the late afternoon sunshine at Zandvoort. It's still 29 degrees. It's going to be roasting in those uh, cockpits. You can add about 30 degrees onto the ambient temperature for the drivers who are also all having to deal with wearing helmets, uh, fireproof uh, undergarments, gloves, boots, all the stuff you don't want to be wearing for a day at the beach, really. So uh, it's going to be incredibly hot, especially with not much airflow coming through the car when they're uh, doing these low speeds. But they are about to be really released back into action. And we know what the new pit stop window is going to be. We'll let you know, but it has been postponed. We are about to get back racing up to full speed, though. Lawrence, Nico Gola and Max van der Snell looking for his first podium of the season are the top three. And it's side by side for third place with Robin Rogalski on the attack as well. And the 77 car coming through on the way into Tarzan. The next car through then leading the next group of cars is Max Hacklander uh, in that battle squabble that's going on for fifth, sixth and seventh positions. And Jokova has come into the pits. Now, pit stop window will not be postponed. The message came up on the screen, sorry. So pit stop window not postponed. So we are open. And the first one to come in just before we got back up to speed then was Gabriela Jokova. Uh, so that car drops for now, down to last in the order. Nobody else has come into the pits. Will that strategy work? So there you go, confirmation on the screen. Pit window is open. It's just opened up now. Would you time that right is the next question. Did they get in in time just as the pit window had opened? Hopefully, from their point of view, they weren't too early crossing the white line on the way into the pits. So that's put Hacklender up to fifth place. Sixth place is Pommer now. Marshalovsky's up to seventh. Hugenboom's up to eighth. Jeffries is up to ninth, and Sparandio is up into the top ten at the moment. So it's only going to be a few laps this ten minutes, this opportunity for them to come into the pits and make their stops. Meanwhile, Lawrence is making hay while the sun shines here. He's already started to pull away from uh, Nico Gula. Comrade Car Max Hecklander still got a queue of cars behind him, including Marcus Palmer driver second in the championship. Uh, none of the front runners elected to come in. There is one in the background that's come in, though. I think from fourth, fifth place. Let's have a look. Just coming into the pit lane now. Yeah, it's Robin Rogalski from that uh, what fourth place that comes into the pits. Going on the attack, trying to find a way past uh, Max van der Snell on their restart. But coming in now as well is the number three car of Steiner. So Steiner's come in also to make a stop. Dino Steiner handing over to Konstantin Scholl, the Austrian driver. As Freddie Hunt <laughs> relaxes in true Hunt fashion here, at lighting up at the side of the track. Chip off the old block, isn't he? Yeah, he's had uh, some success. He's done a lot of races in a lot of different uh, categories. He's getting the gaffer tape out now, I think. But, uh, 
There you go. Not a group, the return he wanted, the Nürburgring winner on this championship last year in 2022, but hopefully have a better day tomorrow. So Rogalski, Steiner and Kevin Roy, Rorschach have been into the pits as well now. Jakova, 15th and the final runner, but she'll should move at least ahead of two of those cars. Uh, here then, a battle between the number 35, Esperandio, and he is currently just about hanging on to ninth position, but it is only just luck. These two running absolutely uh, nose to tail. And right on his tail is the number 70 car of El Backer, who has gained a place after Rogalski came into the pits as well. So they come over the start finish line. This next group of cars, 1.4 second advantage for Lauren Sir. Nico Gola in second place is about 0.9 of a second clear of Van der Stel. Then Hacklender, Palmer, fourth and fifth. Marshalowski in sixth place. Hugo Moore in seventh place. Barandio and Elbacker having this battle, which is spread out a little bit more now, are running in eighth and ninth positions. And Axel Jeffries has come into the pits as well now uh, to make his uh, stop which most of them are going to have to do fairly soon. It's already, that was only six minutes or so uh, left on the clock in terms of uh, pit stops. So you saw Sparandia having a uh, decent battle there, trying to dig in and hold on to his position. And yes, Sparandia, the Swiss driver, just 17 years of age, won four consecutive junior Swiss karting championships and uh, real talent in karting, and now running in LMP3 racing. There, there's your race leader, Lawrence Earl, coming through. The gap from second to third is pretty tight still. At under a second, there's a big gap back then to Max Hecklander, who's pulled away a little bit now from uh, Pommer, Marshalowski and Hugenboom, but not much. Four, fifth, six, seven, still pretty close together. They make their way through the left at turn 11, uh, right at turn 11, the left at turn 12, which is pretty heavily banked as well. It's the penalty box coming out of turn 12, top of the picture, into 13, and then the banking of 14, which is really, really steep. You go up to the top of this banking and you look down and it's uh, it's quite hairy. It gives excellent grip for these cars. Slings shot their way through with all the downfalls on these LMP3 cars. And look at this battle for fifth place with Marshalowski ahead of Pommer now as well in the battle for sixth position. Hatlinda though still just about fending them off. Um, with uh, Sparandio and Jeffries trying to make their way back up the order, having made their pit stop. So Marcus Pommer having a real yo-yo race here. He's been second, he's been as low as ninth, he's been sixth, seventh, sixth at the moment behind Marshalowski. He's going well on this restart, isn't he, in the number 14 car. And just on the tail, uh, Max Hecklander now, as they make their way down through turn seven. Meanwhile, Lawrence is 2.3 seconds up the road now in the lead of the race from Nico Gula. Well, Nico's just matched him through the first sector on this lap. The last lap was the fastest lap of the race from Lawrence Hill with 132.501 second lap. So, yeah, Marshalowski going well, but it's going to be the end of their stint soon because just over four minutes to go before the pit window closes. Car five, a black and white flag for the safety car restart, then, is all it was. Lovrath now behind the wheel of the car, Xavier Lovrath. And that car back in 12th place. Jim Cover was the one that had the uh, warning, or picked up the warning for the team for the car. So we've got still just under 27 minutes on the clock in this race. We've got a leader looking comfortable, and I think Lawrence Hill will want to stay out as long as possible the way he's going. He's definitely got the handle on everybody else here so far in this race. If you're flying, why not pull away as far as you can? Uh, Marshalowski ahead of Hatlinder as well now, that battle. So up to fourth place for Marshalowski. Picked up three positions in the last couple of laps of the race. So Hatlinder down to fifth position. Marcus Pommer still kind of hanging on to them in sixth place, but coming under pressure himself from Leonard Hugenbu. In seventh place in the 78 car, just a couple of tenths of a second behind him. The cars hop and skip and bounce as they go up through turn six over the crest and down towards turn seven. All the weight shifts to the front of the car as they drop downhill once again. Continue down to turn eight. BHK have got their car in for a pit stop. And release back out. That's uh, that was car was up into the top ten, the number 47 car of uh, Kampman, which now switches around.
Robert Doyle will take over that car. Here is the gap battle, which has changed to the tune of about two tenths of a second. Pommer falling away a little bit at the moment. Right, the team's ready to go for Nico Gula then. A huge experience, Berlin-based team, Ruka Motorsport, VWT backing on the team. And he's not going to be the only one coming into the pits with less than two minutes to go now. In comes the race leader. So in comes number 72, Lauren Sir gets out of the car. He can help Matthias Luton in. There's no work that can be done on the car. Change of seat. Much taller, Matthias Luton steps into the car. But you've also got Nico Gula and Max van der Snell in the pits as well. So top three all in. Car 72, 8 and 99. Marshalowski and Pommer have stayed out. Hack Lender has come in as well. And Hugenboom has come in. So Marshalowski and Pommer, the only ones in the top nine that have stayed out. They'll pick up first and second positions in the race for now, but they're going to have to come in probably into this next lap. Right, this is a, a replay of a ragged run over the kerbs here. Oof. That was fairly hairy, scary stuff for Max van der Snell. Just about caught it and got away with it. And then it was a bit tight coming into the pits to find his box for Laurent Hur, trying to avoid running over one of the uh, mechanics from Muka Motorsport. Nico Gula came in just behind. So Gula and Hur both having to wait here with their additional time on top of the minimum pit stop time. Max and Mark van der Snell. Mark now getting into the car. Once are replaced by Matthias Luton and Nico Gula is replaced by Gustavo Curnia. Right, firing up the engine simultaneously. They go both silver pairings, those two. And it's as you were, really, nose to tail with the 72 car getting out just ahead of the eight car. And now Marshalowski and Pommer do come in as well. So they come in right at the end of the pit window with less than 10 seconds to go. So this is the battle for the lead of the race once it all sorts itself out, or at least it should be. With Luton and Kilia now, nose to tail, building up speed. And Mark van der Snell still in the pit stops, in the pits in the 99 car. Marshalowski and Pommer in as well. Just hand over to their respective teammates. We've got how long left? 22 and three quarter minutes left on the clock. So this battle going on here, raging on as Kuriak trying to fend off the car. It's breathing down his neck at the moment. As they make their way as one, it's the number five car has already made its pit stop of Xavier Lovaras, which is pushing on just behind. He's up to speed already, and we've been in the car for a lap or two, and looks up the inside, and drawing alongside. This is the battle for second place, as it will become, and Lovarath is almost there, almost alongside, as they go over the crest, drop down towards the chicane. He's on the outside, but we'll have the inside for the left-hand part. Will he get through? He's on, almost on the kerbs. There's a back marker as well, which is making life even more complicated. He still can't find a way past Kyria. Uh, so Kyria holds on to the position again, looking at the inside. Is Lovarath to try and come through and all of this allowing Matthias Luton to get further and further away what will be come now as they cross the line the lead of the race re-establishing themselves as the race leaders that should be the case anyway uh, the sticks car is the last to pit that's coming out and a drive-through penalty is coming to the car of uh, Hugenboom for causing an accident. Pedro Carino taking over the wheel of the car now. Look at this. Xavier Lovaras trying to high line here around the banking at turn three to get on the throttle as they come up to another car here. Absolutely together as they go downhill now. Swim through the left hander at turn four, climb through turn five and up to turn six over the crest. No way through here. This is terrific driving, terrific defending here uh, from Kirlia in the number eight car who's just about keeping Xavier Lovrath behind him for now. Fourth and fifth, they came through, but it's going to become the battle for a podium position here. Gary Hauser has taken over that from Marcus Pommer as well now. Uh, so the other championship front runners again, absolutely side by side. He gets alongside, he almost gets his nose in front. 
And the number eight car of Kyria is able to just about fend him off. And that looks like a recovering spin from the number two car of Danny Sufi. Yeah, the American looks like he's had a moment, I'm afraid. And this is a replay of, is it on his own? Yes, it was, I'm afraid, all on his own. He's losing the back of the car. It looks like it's coming out of turn nine, midway through the lap. But no harm done other than all of the time uh, lost in the race. The leaders, though, have made their way over the start finish line and here we go around the outside Xavier Lovras trying to get through Stixma has come out in the lead of the race after the pit stops at the moment in the 14 car but the gap is coming down we are not seeing that car but it is number 14 that leads from uh, Matthias Luton the 72 car that gap is coming down all the time this is the battle for the final spot on the podium as it stands with Kirillia just just fending off Lovras here and Lovras trying something on almost every corner. Couldn't be any closer. Almost swapping paintwork, these two. Xavier Lovras in the number five car. Tremendous driving, but also tremendous defending here uh, in the number eight car to hold on to that position from Gustavo Kirillia. Terrific battle. And she's just spread out a little bit now. And I mean a little bit because they're still almost together as they make their way through the right at turn nine, up towards the left at turn ten. Here he comes again, nibbling up the inside, Xavier Loraz. Still can't quite find a way through. They're just running through your shot then in first sight, really, of the number 14 car of Jasper Stixma. Jan Moschlowski drove that car. Stixma is having his debut and finds himself in the lead of the race. And again, trying to come around the outside and then get the inside and two wheels on the curb is it here for Loraz. And it's the second time he's tried that move. He's trying to go around the outside at turn 11, the right-hander. That leads directly into that back Banked, dropped corner at uh, the second part of the chicane at turn 12. Trying to get the inside line for that one, but can't quite get close enough and far enough alongside. And has to keep putting a wheel through the gravel and backing off out of the manoeuvre as well. So, here we are just doing a perfect job here of defending that position. Then you've got Gary Hauser trying to fend off Valentino Catalano behind as well for fifth and sixth positions. So we've got Stixman going really well, actually, at the head of the field. He's pulled away on that last lap from Luton. The gap's grown to 1.6 seconds. 14 car leads, a 72 car in second. Kirnia and Lovras have had this tremendous battle for third place. Gary Hauser is going to have his hands full of the uh, Valentino Casolano car shortly. Casolano had a stunning lap in qualifying at Oxfordsleben to get uh, pole position on day one there. And then they uh, got a race victory on Sunday last time out at Oxfordsleben three podium finishes now and that race win but they could also move ahead of Apotolos and Tanjo in terms of the championship and find themselves either first or second in the championship depending what happens to Hauser and Palmer these are uh, second and third of the championship and look at this all on the grass here as they go side by side two wheels on the grass for Kirlia as he comes storming through total bravery there to get through and on the car to manage to keep Lovras behind him as well and that was utter commitment as he came through the 47 machine of camp and trying his best to stay out of the way as well uh, but Luton I think coming unstuck dropping down the order as a safety car is deployed again and has dropped behind the pair of them to fourth place on the road now had he had an error just before that which dropped him into the clutches because he was quite a way ahead Car two is under investigation for pit stop infringement now as well, which is the Danny Sufi car. And he had a replay. Ah, it was coming through. He got stuck behind the back marker. That then onto the grass went Kirillia. And with loss of momentum, Luton, the 72 car, then came unstuck and lost another place at the chicane. So just in the nick of time, Kirillia and Lovras both getting through to second and third positions. It's our third safety car of the race now, though and there's just over 16 minutes and 15 seconds left on the clock, or less than that now. So catch a breath, how about this? Into the lead of uh, the race after that uh, pit stop phase and a really good end to his stint by uh, Jan Marshalowski to get, what, three or four positions on the restart, the second restart, to hand over then to his teammate Jasper Stixma, the German driver, and give him his debut, and their debut is a pairing, the lead of the race. But that lead will diminish now, thanks to the safety car. Kirillia in second place, having this awesome battle with uh, Xavier Lovras as well. 
Alvarez, the 23-year-old who's competed in uh, Spanish Formula 4, the Euro Formula Open when he was single-seater racing, but moving into GTs in 2018, four seasons racing in GT4 Europe. Currently racing in the Asian Le Mans series is Xavier Lovraz with great success as well, running up there at the sharp end of the championship this year and also competing in the Prototype Cup and trying all sorts in the number five car to just try and find a way past uh, Gustavo Kirilia, the Brazilian driver. 28-year-old who's been racing prototypes for three seasons now. Former Brazil endurance champion. Great battle it was. Watching those two go absolutely uh, wheel to wheel, wasn't it? But Kyria holding on crucially to that position and now maybe having a chance to go if we get back underway fairly shortly for the lead of the race on the Sticks McCart. It's going to be right behind it now. That Sticks McCart got a couple of seconds clear. But uh, Gustavo. Kirilla in the Muka Motorsport car will have designs on trying to get the lead of the race away from Stixman when we get, get back going again. But we'll also have to keep it on the mirrors with Xavier Lovras uh, behind. you got Matthias Luton who got delayed by the back marker and lost those two places from second down to fourth just before the safety car came out. You've also then got another subplot with that battle that was raging for fifth place between uh, number 15, Gary Hauser, and number 77. Uh, Valentino Catalano. These are the front runners in the championship, those two, because they are currently uh, running second and third, respectively, in the championship. Gary Hauser and Marcus Pommer run second on 81 points. Ten points behind them are Robin Rogalski and Valentino Catalano. And at the moment, uh, Gary Hauser for fifth place would bag 11 points. Valentino Catalano would bag 10 points for sixth place. So they both gain ground on Apotolos and Tunjo. And with fifth place, 11 points, Hauser and Pommer would move up to 92. They'd move into the championship lead. Guski and Catalano, if they stay where they are, in sixth place, 10 points, 81 points, would draw level with Hauser and Pommer, but would have less in the way of second place finishes. Same race wins, but one less second place finish. So if it stays like this, I reckon it'll be the championship lead, sorry, the championship lead for Hauser and Pommer, they'll move on to 92 points. Uh, Rogalski and Catalano will move on to 81. Uh, yeah, they'll stay third behind Apotolos and Tanjo on 86. So it would be a new championship lead for Hauser and Pommer, even though if it stays like this, it's going to be their worst result of the season so far. Fourth place, not been off the podium. Uh, sorry, fifth place, not been off the podium yet, those two. Two wins a second. Sorry, win two seconds and a third for Gary Hauser and Marcus Palmer. Jan Marshalowski and his new teammate will be looking good. He raced with Marco Kacic, the, the Canadian driver, to a couple of eighth place finishes and a couple of eleventh place finishes so far uh, this season. And the race is, I'm afraid, going to be red flagged after all of that and will not be resumed, we're told, because we are heading closer and closer towards the curfew, and there's still a GT4 qualifying session to come after this. The curfew here at Zandvoort is 7 o'clock, so I'm afraid a very bitty race, that, with three safety car interruptions, one red flag, then a permanent red flag, and no worries at all, though, for the race victors, because with the first win this season for Jan Marshalowski and on his debut, his new teammate are going to get the victory. <laughs> So it'll be joy when he gets back into the pits for the, uh, the driver, who's actually doing a really good job, wasn't he? Quick driver and new to these cars. But Stixma is going to be a winner, first time now. Jasper Stixma. And great success for them. Full house of points. And second place, it's going to be for Kilia and... Lovaraz, third place after that tremendous battle for what, three or four laps with uh, Kirillia, but not quite able to get past. So, Gustavo Kirillia, the Brazilian driver, Nico Gola for Muka Motorsport, pretty happy with that second place finish, I reckon. Gaining on the championship leaders, but there's Jan Marshalowski, he's already congratulating his teammate. 
after a perhaps unexpected victory. Jasper Stixma, there you go. This is easy, this uh, prototype Cup Germany racing. It's not. It's never going to be easy, but a uh, seat that was all really because of that last few laps that Marshalovsky put in before the pit stop window. And then Stixma drove really well, didn't he, when he got into the car. So they got out. We're number one. First trip onto the podium this year for the team and Marshalovsky, and it's straight to the top step of the podium. Second place going the way of Nico Gola and Gustavo Kirilla. And third place to the very entertaining Xavier Lovras and Gabi Djilkova played her part in the first part of the race. That was the, the car that came in and made the pit stop first, right as the pit window opened. Well, Lovras was uh, great entertainment, wasn't he? There he is, giving a hug to teammates, Gabriel Djokova. And uh, you can be very proud of his efforts, because it wasn't for the one to try that he wasn't able to get through on the number eight car, but in the end, uh, a podium it will be, and I'll be pretty pleased with that uh, podium result as well, I would uh, expect. And drivers. So I mean, Lovras uh, didn't compete in the first weekend at Hockenheim. Sixth place finish for him and Jill Kova at Oschersleben. And now, for their second weekend together, they've got their first podium of the season as well. So an unusual set of results. Started really with the loss of Oscar Tanyo, who was second retiree fairly early in the race. And uh, a lap or so. And we lost the championship leaders in their first DNF of the year, their first non-podium finish of the year uh, as well. So the podium celebrations will come up. We've got the subcategories to keep an eye on as well when they come to uh, the podium, the junior winner, and the trophy category uh, winner as well. Yes. Yes. Champions. Yes. And you can hear the celebrations and cheers in the background as well. Yes, we are the champions. The trophy category is for the bronze level drivers in the junior championship for the younger drivers in the field. Posing then, we are the champions. We've got the victory. What a start to the weekend. A race interrupted by safety cars and red flags, but none of that uh, will worry. Uh, race winners. Pit stop infringement, by the way, has been reported to the stewards for the number 22 car. So, drivers catching up on some much needed refreshment uh, after what has been a hot race, despite the, uh, the interruptions. Thinking, won't have helped them actually. Weren't going like absolutely flat out, were they? But they had to still like on top of me to deal with that lack of airflow behind the safety car race. and the heat was, bearing down I upon them. Imagine. It's actually got warmer since the, the start of the race, in incredibly, by 0.3 of a degree. Really? The car was with you, was blocking you in the turn 10 when you're breaking. Yeah. So there to the, the right one, uh, is Gustav Kirilla. Gustav Kirilla and Nico Gula discussing their race from their various perspectives. Nico Gula having had a stop start first part of the race with that interruption. to the front and then was okay. That was a moment in turn two, turn three. Kirilla, I think probably spending a lot of time talking about that battle he had with Xavier uh, Lovaraz. So there, uh, confirmation after 19 interrupted race laps of the results of race one here at Zandvoort with Marshalovsky and Stixma as the race winners by uh, 2.7 seconds from Nico Gola and his teammate, you just heard from there, Gustavo Kirilla, the Brazilian driver. Third place going to Xavier Lovaraz and Gabriel Djilkova, their first podium of the season as well. And a disappointing fourth place in the end for Matthias Lutas. Uh, sorry, Matthias Luthen and Lawrence Hoer, who were at the front, and then second place, and then second became fourth very quickly as Matthias Luthen was distracted by uh, a bat marker, tucked to the grass and lost two places in quick succession just a few seconds before the safety car came out. So the drivers now awaiting the uh, podium yeah. presentation. They've got another qualifying session, yeah, another race to come. Remember, whoever qualified today is the other driver that qualifies tomorrow. 
Other than uh, the single driver entries, that is the case. <laughs> and whoever qualifies tomorrow starts the race. It'll be the other way around. Hopefully, we'll have less interruptions uh, to the racing. But the highlight of that was definitely that battle for second place. Xavier Lovras was the real entertainer in that race. So the top three cars have been brought into the Park Fermi area. And it'll be up on the top of the garages where the uh, podium beckons and the champagne spray beckons for our top three our trophy winner and our junior category as well. And you know, in the end, pit stop ended up being not delayed. And that might just have been the key factor there because that quick thinking from the JVA racing team to get Gabriel Jokova in and handing over to Xavier Lovras pretty early on might just have got them that first podium finish of the season, their second weekend together as a driver pairing. So here they are being called to the podium then for the first time this season and it's a partnership which seems to be working well, starting to gel now these two. Um, and say quick thinking from the team to get those two onto the podium, Jokova and Lovras. But couldn't quite find a way. Could he pass Gustavo Kirila? Nico Gula played his part in the first half of the race as well. But it is going to be victory here at Zanvor for Jan Marshalowski and Jasper Stixma on his debut in the Prototype Cup Germany after uh, a pit stop towards the end of the window uh, helped them into first place as we get. The rest of our podium finishers up then, our trophy category winner. Our team winning representative makes his way up onto the podium as well. So here they are, applauded up. The national anthem for the race winners will come up soon. Uh, information that the 22 car of Hacklinder and Van Goltzen gets a 30 second time penalty as we get the German national anthem. So here in the Netherlands, the German national anthem plays out over the uh, speakers at the end of the first day of action here at Zandvoort. It's time for the trophy presentations now. And first to receive their trophies, our race winners, Jan Marshalowski and Jasper Stixma. From Michelin, it's Philippe Plex that presents the trophy or trophies to our winning pairing. And again, we've got the trophies from Menno Lida, who is involved in running the circuit here at Zanvoort behind the scenes and putting these events together. On the first. All right. A bit of confusion on trophies. There we go. There are the winner's trophies now being presented. That's the real deal. Number one on the trophies and Marshalowski and Stixma absolutely delighted with that. Our winning team. They're very pleased with uh, their efforts as well. The MRS GT Racing Team, our winning team here. They get some silverware as well. <laughs> Going off the podium a bit too soon there because we've still got the photos to come. Try to get dry or stay dry. Uh, Gabriela Djokova and uh, Xavier Lovras. But we beckoned back onto the podium. Don't run yet. Uh, I know you might get wet for champagne, but we need a photo of everybody up on the podium first, which is now uh, the case. And... Everyone that doesn't want champagne, get off the podium. They run. <laughs> but still sharing or trying to share everybody else with champagne was Xavier Lovras there, but he did a pretty bad job with that and managed, I think, to miss everybody. Uh, so the sports prototype cup race there was, I say, a rather truncated and interrupted race, but there'll be more to come tomorrow and hopefully uh, another uh, lively race with the championship having changed hands. So that's it from uh, Zanvoort for day one. Race two coming up local time tomorrow at 10 past three. We'll be on air five minutes before that to talk you through all the action for race two here at Zanvoort. But for now, we'll leave you with highlights from the first race of the weekend here in Holland and an unusual end to the race 
the red flag coming out and the victory going the way for the first time this season to Jan Marshalovsky and Jasper Stixma. Lots of action along the way, lots of dramas and one or two retirements along the way as well. Hard work from the teams in the pit stops to make things happen. But in the end, we got there and that first race completed. Hope you've enjoyed uh, the coverage of this first race of the weekend for the Prototype Cup Germany. See you again tomorrow for race two.